Hospital? Don't be ridiculous. Get your ass out of the hospital, even if you have to crawl back home. You're the housekeeper. My husband suddenly yelled at me on the phone. I was hospitalized with a high fever. For my husband, Louis, no matter what the reason, the mere fact that he doesn't have a wife to do the housework is cause for anger. I usually do all the housework, but still, all he does is complain. And then when I get sick, instead of worrying about me, he gets upset. How narrow minded is the man I married? I was deeply disappointed in myself for having chosen such a man as my husband. But it seems I was not the only one who thought so. When my mother in law heard my husband yelling, she said to me with a straight face, Your nightmare ends here. Now, let's start fighting back. My name is Violet, a 35 year old mom with a one year old son. I work as a medical secretary at a hospital. My husband's name is Louis. I met him on blind date. My co worker invited me to. We started dating right after. A few months after we got married, I got pregnant and I had a son, Eli. My life is pretty good, but recently, I'm having a major problem within the family. That is my relationship with my husband, Louis. He has been a dependable and sweet guy, and even after Eli was born, he was very supportive in raising our child, feeding him milk, changing his diapers, and such. However, raising a child requires money. We have to work hard and save money for our son. But my husband doesn't like the idea of me going back to work. When I told him I wanted to leave Eli at daycare, he gave me a disapproving look. What? Daycare? He just turned one. But I'm thinking about the future, and I think I should work too. I want him to be able to do all the things he wants to do. I don't care about that. If he can finish high school and college, that will be enough. What? Even so, I think it's better to be prepared for all kinds of situation. If that's the case, let him give up. It's his fault. He's not smart enough. You are a housewife. You should just take care of the house. But. Oh no. My husband yelled at me and showed his anger. I wanted to give my child the best environment possible. Was I the only one who thought that way? However, my husband is an ordinary businessman. He doesn't get paid well. Since I retired after giving birth to my son, we can no longer afford to save. After six months of talking about these circumstances over and over again, I succeeded in convincing my husband. I was able to return to work full time. But the real hell started from there. After I started working, my husband's behavior changed drastically. Whenever I prepared a meal, he would sarcastically tell me that the food was too strong tasting, too bad to eat, and so on. Not even a winkle in the laundry. Was tolerated. If there is even a speck of dust or hair on the floor, he's in a bad mood for a few days. The only thing that saved me was that he was a good father to my son. He would play with Eli or even bathe him when he came home from work. But no matter how good his mood is, his attitude towards me never changes. And this happened the other day. I was working overtime and got home a little late. I picked up my son from daycare and rushed home. My husband was waiting for me with a devilish look on his face. I'm home! Sorry, I'm late. Sorry? Is that all you can say to me? My husband was super angry at the door. 
Why do you come home later than me? I said I'm sorry. I had a lot to do at work. Don't make excuses. Why are you so bad at everything? You should have stayed home and focused on the housework. But the household situation is getting better because we both work, right? Don't talk back. You do as I say. Hey, lower your voice. Eli can hear you yelling. Even though he's still one, I didn't want him to see his father yelling. But ever since that day, my husband's been yelling at me in front of him. Every time he came home from work, if he didn't like something, he would throw things and take his anger out on me. He is away from home on his day off. So that was the only time I could spend with my son in peace. My son can't speak or understand the situation yet. I didn't want him to hear our argument. Then one day, I woke up in the middle of the night, and my husband was not there. Huh. He went to bed before me last night. Did he go to the bathroom or something? I went back to bed and waited for a while. But there was no sign of my husband coming back into the room. I was worried. So I got out of the bed and went to the living room. The living room lights was on. And I found my husband sitting on the sofa. He was on the phone with someone. He had his back on me. So he wasn't aware that I was there. I was about to open the living room door. You know what? I can't wait to get divorced. Divorce? That's what he said. I took a breath and decided to wait and see. My wife? She's sleeping. She doesn't work that hard, but she sleeps a lot. She's not good at housework either. I don't know why I married such a loser. I can't wait to get divorced and be with you. A lot of heartless, horrible words stopped my heart. When I realized, tears were falling from my eyes. He keeps dissing me like that. Is he cheating on me? Divorce me. What about Eli? I went back into the bedroom without saying a word to my husband. I put a blanket over my head and fell asleep again. The next day was a weekend, so my husband went out in the morning. Now that I think about it, maybe he had been going out on weekends because he was meeting someone he was having an affair with. I'm not talking about weekends only, overtime work and drinking sessions. I wonder if he was just making up excuses for everything and making time for his lover. The more I think about it, the more I think it was true. What if he really was cheating on me? What will happen to Eli? Suddenly, I was overcome with anxiety. And just like last night, I began to cry involuntarily. That's when it happened. The intercom rang. And I came to my senses. I opened the front door to find my mother in law. Standing there with a gentle smile on her face. Long time no see, Violet. I missed you. Oh, hi. Good to see you. But what's up? You used to come over to our house. But you got busy with your job, didn't you? And I wanted to see baby Eli. So I came to visit. I see. Thank you. I'm sorry it's been a while. It's okay. Raising a child while working full time must be hard. You're a great mom, Violet. My mother, in those words of encouragement, brought tears back to my eyes. Then she, perhaps hearing the sound of me sniffing, talking to me in a concerned tone. What's wrong, Violet? Something happened? No, I'm fine. You're not fine. Tell me what's wrong. All right, I'll make you some tea first. Here, I brought some cake. Let's eat it together. My mother in law stood in the kitchen for me and made some tea. She puts the cake on the plate and offered it to me quietly. 
Something must have happened, right? Violet, is it about Luis? Well, it's. I knew something must have happened. Since you didn't come to our house lately. Violet, you can tell me anything. My mother in law gently held my hand and looked straight at me. I didn't want to tell her about her son's infidelity, but I was already at my. But I was already at my limit. Actually, I think Luis is having an affair. An affair? Is he cheating on you? Yes, probably. I heard them talking on the phone last night. He said he wanted to divorce me. What? I'm gonna talk to him right now. Where is he? I don't know. And even if I question him now, I don't have any proof. Proof? Yeah. I just f i n d out yesterday. So I don't have any proof. When I look at the sofa, my son was sleeping peacefully. I didn't want him to hear about the divorce, even if he didn't know what it meant. My mother in law, on the other hand, had been giving me a difficult look. Then she looked up, as if she had just thought of something. All right, Violet. All you have to do is gather evidence. What? Gather evidence? But I've got work to do. And Eli is with me. I don't have time. That's okay. We'll leave it to the professionals. Professionals? Yes. I have a friend who got divorced because her husband cheated on her. She said she hired a PI. So, I'll ask her for more details. Really? That'll be great. My mother in law encouraged me to do so. And a few days later, I decided to request a background check on my husband from the agency she told me about. I asked my mother in law to keep this matter quiet until I got the detailed results. A week later, I went to the detective agency to pick up the result. The result was, of course, exactly what I predicted. Shortly after confirming my husband's infidelity, I collapsed at work. My colleague took me to the hospital, where I found that my fever was over 104. I'd been feeling lightheaded for a while now, but I had no idea it was this bad. I called my mother in law. She said she would pick up my son from daycare and take care of him at her house. After that, she showed up in the hospital room. Violet! Are you alright? I heard you have a high fever. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm okay. Oh my gosh, you must be exhausted. You need a rest now. As my mother in law was laying me down, my phone buzzed in my bag. My phone buzzed in my bag. I asked my mother in law to pick up the phone. It was from my husband. When the call came in again, I pick it up and turn on the speaker. The sound of my husband's yelling echoed through the room. In contrast to my shaking shoulders, my mother in law's face was stained with anger. I have to show my mother in law what my husband was really like. I continued my conversation with him. I'm sorry, I'm in the hospital. What? Why? What about the housework? Why the hell are you in the hospital anyway? Actually, my fever is over 104, and I have to stay in the hospital for the night. So. Don't be ridiculous. Staying at the hospital for a fever? Are you kidding me? But the doctor told me to rest today. Shut up. Go get your ass out of the hospital. Even if you have to crawl back home. You're the housekeeper. He said that and hang up the phone. At the moment, I felt that my feelings for my husband had completely gone. I have no more feelings for him. 
I didn't need to worry about divorce after he'd said all the things he wanted to say to me. My mother in law seemed to have understood my decision. She, lo- she looked at me and gave a small sigh. <sighs> What a scumbag. I'm ashamed he's my son. I'm sorry things turned out this way. No, you don't need to apologize. I'm glad I learned about my son's true nature. Now, I can join you in your revenge without hesitation. Oh, really? Yes, your nightmare ends here. Come on, Violet. Now, let's start fighting back. My mother in law handed me with divorce papers. She must have gotten it on the way to the hospital. I signed it right there and prepared for the divorce. My mother in law agreed to stay with me at the hospital that day. I decided to rest for the time being. My husband kept calling me, but my mother in law told me to ignore him. The next day, my fever went down and I was able to leave the hospital. I went to my in law's house where my son was waiting. My mother in law had already told my father in law what had happened. We all called my husband that night. A few hours later, just as I was putting my son to bed, my husband arrived at my in law's house. My parents in law and my husband are sitting across from each other. Mom, Dad, what's going on? My husband played the gentle son as usual. When I showed up, He frowned for a moment, but his smile returned immediately. Hey, Violet! I'm sorry I couldn't come get you in the hospital. I've been busy with work, you know. I sarcastically replied to him. Work? You were having an affair, weren't you? What? What are you talking about? I would never do such a thing. Don't be silly. In front of my parents. Do you really think the excuse will work now? What's the matter, Violet? Are you mad at me? I know you are having an affair. Here's the proof. I took the photos I got from the agency and laid them out in front of my husband. As soon as he saw them, his smile instantly disappeared. What the hell is all this stuff doing here? I hired a detective agency to look into it, and they found all of this evidence. No, 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 no. This is just for fun. I mean, it's not serious. Trust me. For fun? Yeah, it was just a fling, you know? Even my dad cheated on my mom once or twice. Right, Dad? It's normal for a man. My husband tried desperately to get his in laws to agree, but all they would give him were icy stares. His face gradually turned pale and his voice began to tremble. Violet, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I cheated on you. But I was lonely, and you were always talking about Eli. What are you apologizing for? Do you think I'm mad at you for cheating on me? You're not? I'm sick and tired of everything about him. He's got his weird smile on his face, and he's reaching for my hand. I shook his hand off as hard as I could and said to him, I don't give a damn about your affair. What hurt me the most was the abuse I received on a daily basis. You treat me like I'm your housekeeper. I don't need an apology for cheating. I don't care. I just wanted a normal family. I guess you don't even know what that means. Hey, Violet, calm down. Huh? Calm down? Why the hell you can say to me to calm down? Whose fault is it that we are in this mess? It's all your fault. Your parents know all about what you've done to me. All of us here will never forgive you. No matter what. And I will do whatever it takes to push you over the edge. My husband fell to his knees, 
clutching his head and screaming in agony. I confronted him with the divorce papers and demanded his signature. He quietly fell to signing the papers, as his parents were there. After that, my son and I decided to stay with my in-laws until we found a new place. In between visit to the lawyer's office, I demanded the lump sum of alimony from him and his partner. Eventually, I rented an apartment near my work and moved in with my son. I still keep in touch with my in-laws and have dinner with them regularly. I don't think I will ever see my ex-husband again, but my son has his grandparents. They seem to feel the same way and are very protective of my son. I would like to continue to have a good relationship with my in-laws.